For our Rocket Phoenix, the combustion chamber is another structure besides the tank that we're interested in sharing a little bit about the process we went through in order to make this part. The combustion chamber casing is just a structure that exists around the combustion chamber. It's designed to both contain the pressure of the reaction that's happening inside the combustion chamber and also transmit the thrust load from the nozzle through the rest of the vehicle. So if you can imagine, this part kind of needs to be really strong and rigid and also very reliable because if there's a problem, it's going to result in an explosion. And of course, we're limited by all the standard suspects like money, time, and the tools that we have available. So let's talk about some of the strategies that we use to build our combustion chamber. And maybe some of these strategies might be useful in some of your projects. So be sure to pay attention. Whenever you're designing a new part, you always want to start from the requirements. Let's start at the very beginning. And that's exactly what we did for the combustion chamber casing for Phoenix. The Phoenix propulsion system is designed to produce a maximum of 40 bar inside the combustion chamber. So our casing, of course, needs to be able to contain that pressure. Furthermore, the maximum thrust that Phoenix is expected to produce is around 8 kilonewtons. So it also needs to be able to transmit 8 kilonewtons through the body of the casing as well. And of course, this structure is going to be flying on a rocket, so it needs to be lightweight. There's actually one other convenience requirement that we'd like to have, which is that we want the combustion chamber to actually be quite reusable and easily interchangeable. During a propulsion testing campaign, you want to be able to actually perform lots of hot fires. And of course, that's a lot easier if you're able to rapidly reuse and recycle the combustion chamber itself. It's also great if most of the parts of your combustion chamber are reusable because then you also don't have to keep paying for a whole bunch of items to perform a propulsion test because you might end up doing like 10 hot fires. So if you need 10 separate casings in order to survive all those hot fires, that's kind of not practical from a financial perspective. So with these requirements in mind, we came up with this design, which is essentially just a tube with some holes on each of the ends. These holes are designed to interface with bulkheads, which then close the combustion chamber and form the pressure vessel, which will contain the 40 bar of pressure that makes the rocket work. Of course, we want this structure to be as light as possible. So the plan is for this part to be made out of carbon fiber. If you've watched some of our earlier videos, you know that we have some experience with winding carbon fiber in the past. And the way we usually do this is that we have a metallic liner that we then just wind over top of and that gives us a pretty strong carbon fiber part. So the plan is to do the same thing here, only we're gonna push the boundary of how thin we can make that liner. And this time we're gonna use 0.5 millimeter thick aluminum, which is some of the thinnest stuff we've ever used before. This should further reduce our weight from previous versions that we've made and continue to take advantage of the strength of carbon fiber. But you may notice an obvious problem with this whole design if we're making this out of carbon fiber which are, of course, the 16 holes that are on each end of the casing. Carbon fiber is obviously a fibrous material, so when you cut into a material like this, you actually cut the fibers that are providing the rigidity and the strength of the part. This obviously has a huge weakening effect in those areas where the holes are, and so you're not really gonna get the same performance as you would expect if you just did a simple calculation for how strong you expect the walls to be based on the pressures that are inside. It actually requires some pretty complicated finite element analysis in order to figure out exactly what the strength of your part will be if you put holes into your carbon fiber. But you can lose up to 60% of the strength of the part if you have holes in the way that we've designed them in this part. This means that we'd have to wind the carbon fiber 2.5 times thicker oh, hell no. in order to get the same strength that we'd expect if it was just a continuous fiber wound around the tube. Of course, this will increase our mass by quite a lot, so we kind of want to avoid doing this. And this is where our next strategy for actually winding the carbon fiber onto the tube comes into play. Wouldn't it be great to have a hole in a carbon fiber structure without actually having to cut the fibers? Here you have our next experiment in the structures department. We are going to try to wind a tube that we will not have to drill holes into later. So we 3D printed these rings that are going around our mandrel and they have the holes kind of built into them. So these knobs are gonna be where those holes in our casing should go. Ideally, the fiber should wind around those, and then we should get a nice pattern without having to drill holes. And so we have to have the holes kind of like inbuilt into our wind. We're just experimenting with this. We don't know if it's gonna work, 
But if it does, that's going to be really an advantage from a structural perspective because of course we don't like seeing those holes in a carbon fiber structure. It really decreases the strength of the overall part. There's one extra benefit to this, which is actually to do with precision. As you might imagine, if you wanted to drill holes into our carbon fiber tube, which would match exactly with the holes that are in our machine bulkheads, you might have some difficulty with integration. You would need to design a whole rig and setup, which would allow you to get everything precisely aligned so that you could just, you know, with a hand drill or with a drill press, get all your holes exactly in the right spot. This could be difficult because even with the best practices, the finished carbon fiber is not a perfectly smooth surface. This means that fitting contraptions onto the ends of it in order to guide you and precisely point out the location where holes should be can sometimes be a little bit imprecise. If only we had a CNC lathe or a CNC mill to solve these problems. But alas, we don't have the funds for these expensive tools. And there's no money in here! <laughs> However, the 3D printed template actually serves great in this function because the 3D printer is actually quite precise when it comes to the placement of the little nubs, which are the hole guides. So you essentially get holes exactly in the position they need to be in in order to interface with your part. This works so well, in fact, that these are actually some of the most precise holes we've ever put into carbon fiber parts in the entire history of Astra. Nice. So I would really recommend using this method in order to get some pretty good precision when dealing with carbon fiber. Beyond having fancy computer guided machines, this is pretty much the most precise way you can do it. There is one thing that we added on the end in order to hopefully help the aerodynamics of this part. After all, it is still a rocket and it is going to be flying through the air, so it needs to have somewhat of a smooth finish so that you don't get so much parasitic drag. And to get this, we use shrink wrap tape. The stuff that we get is heat activated, so all you have to do is apply the tape at the end of your winding session, and then heat up the part in order to cause the shrink wrap tape to actually do the shrinking function and compress the tube. This will effectively squeeze out the resin and give you a much smoother surface than you would have if you didn't apply the tape. There's actually one extra optimization that we added to the whole winding process. We have done, of course, the combustion chamber. The new idea for the combustion chamber is to actually have these nubs here, which we wind around in order for there to never be a fiber that's cut. So we have holes without cut fibers. But now, instead of just having those nubs, we also have these little aluminum inserts. Basically what's gonna happen now is, after we've wound over everything, we're gonna drill out the plastic, but the aluminum will remain. So the aluminum is essentially a um, hole reinforcement, which prevents the CFRP from delaminating in the case where there's like stress concentrations. So this should be like the most perfect way you can build this, at least that we can think of so far. Uh, who knows, what will we think of next? Once we finished manufacturing this casing, it was just a matter of figuring out if it's actually up to the task of holding in the 40 bar of pressure that we expected to be able to tolerate. But testing at the 40 bar is not enough. We always wanna test higher to make sure that we're definitely gonna be safe in the operational zone. So our plan is to test to 1.5 times the safety factor of the part. This is a requirement for Euroc, which is the place that we want to fly the rocket in October. The method that we use for pressure testing is to just use a pressure washer. Usually pressure washers are designed to operate at pressures up to around 100 bar. So going up to 60 bar is totally within its realm of possibility. As you can see, the combustion chamber casing has performed quite nicely. It was able to hold 60 bar for quite a long time, much longer than the eight second full duration burn that we're gonna have at the propulsion testing. So we can be quite confident at this point that this part's ready to be propulsion tested. Yeah, <laughs> boy. We can also confirm that using this strategy of winding around the holes is actually quite effective. This part is actually able to be about a kilogram lighter because we're using this technique. And for every kilogram that we save on the vehicle, we're able to get about two or 300 more meters of altitude. So it really makes a difference. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. And if you're curious about other parts of the rocket that we're manufacturing, be sure to subscribe because we have lots of videos that go into all the different subsystems. And we're also gonna be sharing all of the steps that we need in order to get all the way to the launch pad. So we hope that you're ready to take that journey with us. And remember to expand your horizons.